Meantime, let's uh, talk a little about the trading app Robinhood. It filed that S1 is the first step towards one of the most highly anticipated IPOs of the year. And the filing revealed, just revealed so much. Uh, the company's rapid growth on one end, offering insight into its financial roller coaster from earlier this year after a round of what was emergency fundraising, you'll remi you remember, amid all of those meme stock trades. Then there was a lawsuit, a settlement with the SEC. The Robinhood founders have a lot to address to investors in their upcoming roadshow. And joining us right now to discuss all of this is venture capitalist Jeff Lewis. He's the founder and managing partner of Bedrock Capital. Jeff, it's great to see you. I, you know, it was like reading a book last night, trying to understand all of the, the, the different elements of it. Of course, the, the one piece that everybody seemed to be so fascinated by was how reliant they are on Dogecoin in terms of the fees that they were collecting off of crypto. What, what was the thing that stuck out to you? Well, I think that's a very interesting comment, Andrew, on, uh, on the state of the market writ large. And, you know, on the one hand, this is a company that has just executed phenomenally well. I mean, you know, Dogecoin is maybe a uh, case in point of how really this company has not only tapped into the culture, but really created a new culture uh, around trading by democratizing access to the markets for folks through their business model. You know, I think their name is maybe slightly misleading in that they're not really stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. They're driving a lot of order flow for folks like Citadel. But all that said, huge credit to this company. Now, all, all that being said, though, at the same time, um, you got to think about what does the future hold for the markets? And in a world where a huge amount of the volume for or the value, pardon me, for Robinhood is uh, is Dogecoin, a meme cryptocurrency, one does need to ask some questions around uh, is this a is this a long term? Are the markets long term going to keep uh, accelerating with this crazy Fed driven frenzy that we've seen today? And I think I think that actually uh, is the most important question when it comes to this this stock in particular. And how how would you answer that question? Well, you know, I'd, I'd answer that question by uh, by by starting to think a little bit about um, you know on a on a uh, sort of fundamental level. One of the questions I always ask is, if we look at this valuation as a discount on the future, does it make sense? So I think of $40 billion or so valuation for Robinhood as a premium on the past, as a premium on how phenomenally they've executed, their growth, 300% year-over-year revenue growth, phenomenal, like just unbelievable execution in many ways. Yes, maybe you can get to the valuation. As a discount on the future, I'm a lot less convinced. Just as the Blackstone IPO uh, sort of ticked the top for private equity, one could argue that the Coinbase IPO, maybe there was sort of a local maxima on, on Bitcoin with that IPO. I think the Robinhood IPO might be the very top for meme stocks. And I think a, a, lot of the, a lot of the volume and a lot of activity on this app is driven by Gen Z traders. I think their median age is 31. And I do think that things can't really get any crazier on the meme stock stuff at this point or on the meme cryptocurrency stuff at this point. And so as a discount on the future, I'm actually very worried about a future uh, in which the Fed uh, raises rates, the QE insanity stops, right. and the meme stock phenomenon uh, dissipates. Why, why do you believe the meme? I'm, I'm curious why you think the meme stock phenomena and some of the crypto phenomena, maybe we should separate them or maybe connect them however you like, uh, is, is coming to a close. Well, I'd love for them both to Or is continue. it not that coming to a close, it's coming off a high? Coming off a high, and again, these things are cyclical. I, I think they come back. I think retail is pretty, pretty fully invested at this point. Uh, I think I, re I really do. You know, I sort of anecdotally, I speak with my my friends in their early thirties. I feel like retail is very fully invested. Uh, I think that uh, I, I I think that these uh, meme driven phenomena uh, just just feel uh, feel like the end of a cycle to me. So. It's a qualitative gut driven thing. I don't have the an analysis. I don't have the, the data, but my gut is that it, it really can't get that much crazier. And is that the same same with crypto for you? No, that, that, that's very different. But I would say that I'm biased towards the crypto uh, that, uh, that, is, that is less driven by memes and more driven by sort of a long term story around, again, why in the future it would be much more valuable. So if you believe the Bitcoin store value narrative, you know, remain quite bullish there. And I think Robinhood has a good story as a, as a crypto platform as well. And I'm, I'm not a bear on this business. I just want to wait and see over the next, next few years. They've, they've certainly executed really well, but something like Bitcoin, Ethereum, if they actually end up depowering an entire decentralized finance system, you could see a lot of value there. So I'm, 
I'm long-term bearish on a few of the cryptocurrencies. And then I do think the meme stocks where the core businesses really don't have great fundamental values or strong stories. And even the CEOs of these businesses are in on the joke and, and recognize how absurd it is on these meme stocks. That's very different right. from a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin, where there is no CEO or even Ethereum, where it's, you know, Vitalik's not, not the CEO or anything like that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.